Hello there, I'm Dan, and today I'm going to be taking a look at a Heimdalla SKX style watch. I'm going to unbox it, give my thoughts on it, and then mod it to make it look like a Grand Seiko style watch. So without further ado, let's get stuck in, whoosh! So there's the box. Let's have a look at the watch inside. Oh my. Fairly decent box, actually. Uh, yeah. Let's have a quick look underneath. Yeah. It comes with a thing to remove spring bars, a little warranty card in here. Already I'm impressed with this. I've got another watch here as a uh, control. This is a custom-built Seiko with mostly the Mocky Mod parts. You've got a nice bezel action. You know, signed crown, nice finishing on the case. That's a Miltat strap code bracelet, milled clasp. You know, very high quality. So let's unwrap this and see if it stacks up. Oh my. That, uh... That flat sapphire crystal actually looks pretty decent. The finishing on the case? Look at that! Oh, wow. Wow, that feels like a pretty decent clasp. At least from the initial opening. Let's uh, get this off. Get that off. And let's get this one off. The loom is already fantastic. You can really see, like, that is bright C3 loom. Wow, even the bracelet feels fine. It doesn't feel as premium. Well, maybe. It's not bad. It's actually pretty close. Finishing on it feels fine. It's got nice polished sides on it. Milled clasp. I'll, uh, Decide how comfortable it is once I've sized it up and I've got it on wrist. Wow, this is... This is really impressive. Let's set the time on it, see how the crown action is. Oh, winding action's decent. I like to set it the day before and then wind it over 12 o'clock and then we can check the function as well. Feels pretty smooth, like the operation of the watch is smooth. Although, yeah, look at that. It does tick over to the 4th long before midnight, which is unfortunate, but that's not a problem for me because I'm going to set new hands on it when I mod it. That chapter ring's nice too. Let's give it a bit of a wind. And that print on the dial is really clean. Yeah, the winding action's nice. How does the screw-down crown feel? Hmm. Whoa, oh, that's a bit stiff. Yeah, that's a bit stiff. Whoa. Let's have a look at the bezel action here. Oh, that's not... That doesn't feel like a click spring. I mean, it's solid. It's nice and solid, actually. But that doesn't feel the same as the... Uh, if we listen to this. It just feels lighter, crisper. Easier to turn. And, of course, you've got the, uh, the solid case back with the Sharky logo on it. Yeah, I'm impressed with this. This is ri this is really good value for money. For 120 quid, this is not bad at all. It's got weight to it. Like it, it feels solid. The case, especially the case. The bracelet's probably the cheapest feeling part, and yet it's not terrible. How does this clasp feel? That feels fantastic. That is a good milled clasp. I'm almost sad to uh, swap it out. That's phenomenal. And the loom as well, like, it's it's bright. If we, uh, we've got a, if we brighten that up. That is, that is some impressive loom for such a cheap watch. All round, that's a really impressive watch. I'll be curious to see what the bezel is underneath. So I'll size it up and get it on wrist and see just how comfortable it is or isn't on wrist and more specifically these crown guards they're quite different to the ones on these Namaki cases when compared to this it's very it's straight edge on the bottom so that might dig into the wrist more right so there it is on wrist it's uh 
It fits fairly comfortably. I've swapped the clasp for one that does not have the Heimdalla logo on it. Albeit, this one's actually better. This was one that I bought separately. This one's much more stiff than this one. The actual Heimdalla clasp is decent. And if you're not planning on modding this watch or do anything to it, this is a decent clasp. These crown guards do press in. They don't sharply dig into your hand, but you can feel it. After changing the links on the bracelet, I found that they are pin and collar, not push pins, and they feel really sturdy. The links individually, they feel they feel well made. Like this is a decent bracelet. This is definitely a smoother, easier ratcheting system than this. This is it's not bad though, it doesn't feel bad. It feels cheaper, yet at the same time, it feels incredibly sturdy, like... I mean, when I saw the pictures of this, I thought this bezel looked a bit, you know, eh, but actually, this is a really high quality watch for the money. But that, you can hear it, that bezel action is not amazing in terms of feel, but in terms of firmness, it's it's really good. It's, it, it there's no, look at that. There's not much play in it. Although I am going to pop it off now, and we'll see just what's compatible with this when we mod it. That is not a fun bezel to remove. It is coming off though. Doesn't pop off as uh, firmly. I'm going to do this off camera. There we are. Oh, I see. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. It uses one of these. Whoa, what was that? That just flew off. One of these. Yeah, so that is definitely a cheaper bezel mechanism. And it's only got the one hole. So if I wanted to use a click spring and a regular SKX bezel, I couldn't do it. And just in case you were wondering, this bezel insert that comes with the Heimdalla will fit in any other SKX 007 bezel. Oh dear, look at that big scratch on the case that I've done in trying to get that other bezel off. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You see that gap? That is real. I can attempt to do it one last time, but at this point we're just destroying the case and the bezel. Look at that, you've just scratched the bezel. You've just literally dented the bezel doing that. Yeah, that's already going down at an angle. Why don't we uh, rotate it and then finish it. You can still see the gap. Ugh. I heard that last click, but whether or not the gap is still there remains to be seen. No? Ha <laughs> ha! All the way around, that is now a nice flush fit. There we are. Decent screw case back. And there is the NH36 in all its glory. So let's see if this fits. There we are, that's nice and tight. See that lovely NH36 in there. I do, I, even though I like the Namaki case back, I do prefer this one because it's a larger piece of glass so you can see more of the movement inside, and it's flatter, so it makes the watch less chunky. Now I'm going to see if these crown guards cause any discomfort by digging into the wrist. So I'll give it a couple of days and see how it feels. So if we want to take these crown guards here and just round off these edges, we're going to need to take the crown out, put the case back back on, maybe even take the movement out. There we are. We can get a look at the crown for the first time. 
So it does have two O-rings on it. Interesting. It does look different to the Namaki Mods one though. So now we can get the movement out. Got to be really careful not to catch the threads for the crown. Yeah, decent. I think we've got a pretty decent result here. That's actually polished quite nicely. Since I've filed these down, this has been immensely more comfortable. In fact, it's just the comfortable watch to wear now, so that grinding down the crown guards has re completely mitigated that problem, and it's just a pleasure to have on wrist. Although I'm replacing this dial, if you're not going to mod this watch, this is a beautiful dial. If you're not a fan of the Sharky logo, then, you know, it's a bit unfortunate, but it's got texture to it, it's sunburst, it's a nice deep black. When you shine light on it like this, you can really see that beautiful sunburst texture. And the print on the dial is incredibly sharp. Like, this is well done. This is a very well done dial. Line all these up roughly doesn't have to be perfect as long as they're sort of aligned so that when you slide this under here underneath all the hands there we are pretty decent hands so the first thing I'm going to do is put these hands in a safe place so the next thing to do is to get the C-clip off the middle here, this little clip around the centre. There, now you've got a little recess under there, you can just slip your screwdriver in. Get that up and off, there it is. There we are. And then in order to remove this one, we're going to have to take off these four screws. Sometimes it's important to put pressure on these, to, you know, strip the tops of them. Then you take this little metal plate off. So I'm going to use the Rotico and this wooden skewer to just pull this back. There. Let's take this one here, pop it on. There's two. There's little feet here that stick out, just here, and just down here. So you've got to make sure those are on. There we are, that's better. So now I'm just going to turn it just a little bit to make sure it clicks into place there. And then we can put this metal plate back on. It looks large on the camera, but it's absolutely tiny. I'm just going to put in two of these screws to start. That way we can check the functionality of the date is working properly. Yeah, that looks good. All right, let's put the other screws in. So next, we put the day disc on, which is just in here. And we use our little wooden thing here. Just put it onto the middle. And then I like to use my hands to press this on here, and you just sort of... Yeah, just like that. So yeah, so Sunday the 27th is where we want it to align, as you can see. It's doing pretty well. So we'll put the C-clip on there. It looks like everything is functioning as it should. There we are. That satisfying little snap. So we're going to take the original dial and we're going to pop it back on. Excellent. Let's make sure that all the days line up as well. 
These might be useful for another day or another build. Say you buy an NH36 on eBay that has a three o'clock day date disc and you want four or 3.8 o'clock. Keep these for another build. So now comes the hard part. And that is to take this dial and remove the three o'clock dial feet from it and then stick it down here. You're obviously supposed to line it up with the date complication there, but I'm gonna make a tiny little mark just to aid lining up the dial. You can see I've scratched that there, but I've made a very tiny mark there. Obviously, it, I would just mark, line it up with this, but of course this one's got it at three o'clock and this one's got it at 12 o'clock, so that's unfortunate. And these feet, we're gonna chop them off with some nail clippers. Two. There, that's better. Nice and flat. Yeah, we've scuffed the back of it, but the front side of it is just fine. Take that off, put that to one side. In fact, we can put that in here. So we know that it's Saturday the 31st. So first, I'm just gonna pop that on. So that's what it's gonna look like. So I'm gonna get some dial dots and lay them around the edge of the movement. If I'm doing this the wrong way, please do tell me the right way to do it in the comments, because I would like to know for the future. Make sure we pull it back enough that it doesn't hinder the date operation. Perhaps I should have cut these down into tiny little dots. So now we get the dial. And we make our best attempt to get it aligned. Before I press that down, I'm gonna check. They all seem to align. So I, I'm gonna press that down. And I think before I clean it, I'm gonna do a quick test fit in the case to make sure it lines up with the chapter ring. This one's slightly off, and so is the, well that one's almost perfect, but this one's off. Probably way too far. Yeah, It's not a flawless alignment, but it's as close as I can get it. Obviously the problem with these dial dots is they're quite elastic-y, so when you push the dial to align it, it does sort of spring back and there's only so far you can push it, but I'm happy with that alignment. It's as good as I'm gonna get it. The way that I pushed the dial to align it was simply using this wooden toothpick here and just gently pushing on the date window there, because obviously this wood is not going to scratch the metal. So we're gonna clean up this dial and then put the hands on. I know this won't be perfect, but it'll be good enough. This is why I don't sell these because if you were charging hundreds of pounds for something like this, if you were buying this for hundreds of pounds, you'd want it to be clean. You wouldn't want it to look like somebody made a few mistakes along the way. Yeah, you can see, look, the dial is not flawless at all. There are marks, sort of marks all over it, which is unfortunate. But I've cleaned this dial several times, trying to get all the scuffs off it, and it, it's never going to be perfect. Still, that looks relatively clean. That's as clean as I'm going to get it. I think like that, that looks like there's a scuff there, but actually that's that's not a that little dot there next to the six o'clock. That is on the dial. That is not a piece of dust because it won't come off. That'll do. Obviously, this is shining bright light onto a dial. When it's in the watch, you won't notice that. At least, hopefully, I won't notice it. Otherwise, it will bother me. Right. Let's put the hands on. Okay. So. 
before we put the hands on, these hands, they're just too long. The hour hand's fine, but I, I did a test fit of all the hands. Oh my gosh. That's a really long minute hand. Is that even gonna fit? Was that designed for a different watch? That is literally the length of the whole dial. It reaches the chapter ring. Get off, please. Get off it. What am I gonna do? Chop the end off? I could chop the end off. I've just hit the camera lens. Yeah, be careful. And in order to take it off, I take off all the hands and do it again. Just go like this. Yeah, just bling those anywhere. So last time I literally just held it in my hands and just stuck out a tiny portion of it and just brushed it up against here so that most of it's still trapped between my fingers and it won't bend because these things are so flimsy and bendable and there's no coming back. Once you bend a hand for a watch, there's no coming back from it. So. Yeah, that's definitely taken material off. Let's just make sure that it's straight. Fortunately, because I picked just metal Dauphine hands, you can do that with these, but w with other hands I wouldn't. Obviously, you can't do this. Just want to slightly round off the tip. We'll give it another clean when we get it on the watch. You can see it's not, it's not perfect, but I mean that is really, really, really zoomed in. Let's see if it's uh, the right length. That's still a bit long. Yeah, I think that's good. I think they've, sh they've shortened up nicely. In fact, I am gonna take a touch off the hour hand as well because it was ever so slightly longer than it needed to be. Right, now that I've filed those down, they should be a better length. Not, I'm gonna get stuck inside the case anymore. I'm gonna roll this over. There we are. Yeah, that's better. That's perfect. So, just got these hand presses here. So we'll start with this one. This is the larger one for the, the hour hand. We're gonna use the one with the large hole in the middle. could stand to be raised up a bit. So we're just gonna press against the back end of the hand here to sort of tip it up. Yeah, that's better. Right, let's check to see if it's okay. There we are, ticks over at a decent spot. Since we're dealing with a dial that was stuck on with dial dots and I'm not confident it's flawlessly aligned, I don't want the alignment at six o'clock being off, so I'm gonna set it to six o'clock to put on the minute hand. But before we do that, we're gonna give this a clean with some Rotico. Wow, is it just me or is that absolutely wriggling? Look at, look at how much play that's got. And this is a different piece of Rotico to the one I was using before. Yeah. And for the minute hand, I'm gonna use the larger side of the medium size hand presser. There we go, that satisfying snap as it goes on. I'm just tipping it back again like I did with the other one. That looks good. Let's see how bad the alignment is. Seven o'clock's fine. Yeah, that's fine. What about 12 o'clock? Yeah, I'm happy with that. What time does it tick over? Just after 12. 
I am satisfied with that. Yeah, there was a speck on the dial there, but I got it. Oh, I tell you, when I took the hands off the first several times, I was using this, this Bergen dial protector. Ah, it got stuck on the Seiko logo and bent the O backwards. My heart stopped. I was able to get it back, but there is a very, very, very tiny notch between the K and the O on the bottom that I will know is there, but you won't see it with the naked eye, but it's there when you put bright lights on it and zoom in. <sighs> I've taken hands off multiple ways. I've used the dial protector and the pry tool where you sort of stick it underneath and pry it out from underneath. But I've since learned that the way many people do it is they place one of these bags over the hands and then they get these and then press it over, pinch it shut and it pulls them off really cleanly and I should have done it that way from the beginning. So, you know, lesson learned. Now all we've got to do is put the second hand on, which is uh, the tricky one because you've got to get this tiny pin in the middle here. Is that actually on? I think it is. Let's make sure that it's level. That looks good. Now that I've got those fully pressed in, let's just make sure they're not interfering with each other. No, there's good clearance there. Wow, that's spot on. And it lines up at the six o'clock, right? Yeah, that's pretty good. We'll do the same on the inside of the case. We just flip it over and then gently press it down, check the alignment, that needs an ever such a slight rotation this way, there. And we get the crown, put that in, make sure the operation of the watch is decent before we seal it up. Wine's good, that's functioning just fine. Perfect. Right, let's get the case back on. That is so much better now that I've filed down those hands to the appropriate length. I'm very tempted to polish this bezel and polish the middle links of this bracelet to give it an even more dressier watch look, especially because the case does have different types of finishing on it and I wouldn't mind carrying that out through the rest. But in general, I think that's looking fantastic. So there it is next to my Sari 57. You can see what I mean about the wanting to polish the bezel. The Sari 57 has a beautifully polished bezel, but one of the one of my only complaints about the Sari 57, because it's probably one of my favourite Seikos, is the bezel's very thin. And so I built this to have a SKX variant of the Sari 57 with a larger pilot's bezel. The only uh, actual modification I did to the Sari 57 here is I put on some Lucius Atelier hands that give it more of a Grand Seiko look since the original hands were 
Well, they're pretty much identical to this, really, except for the actual profile of them. They're much thinner than these Dauphine hands here. So I was actually pretty happy to find a set of Dauphine hands that have the bevel in the middle, but are the Grand Seiko profile rather than the thinner ones that you see on the original Sari 57. I'm also going to sand down this bit here, just so that when I polish it, I can clean it up a bit. We'll mask it off, polish the whole bezel, and see how it goes. Just a slight scuff there I want to sand down. And just got to mask off these four corners here. Just want to make sure we protect the brushed surface. Right, that looks good. I think I might cover the glass as well. Here goes nothing. At least you can see what I'm doing this time. I mounted the camera on an arm to the workbench. I'm going to use this Cape Cod polishing cloth here just to get rid of any scuffs that the polishing wheel might have left on it because it's it was not the right polishing wheel for the job and it's pretty haggard as well but this should just get rid of any surface scratches and make it look a bit neater, smoother. Yeah, as you can see, it is coming off on there, so it's doing something. So there you go. Hopefully that's smoothed it out a bit. I'll just clean off the compound now. It's important to clean this off thoroughly because this compound does eat into metal and you don't want it slowly rubbing more metal off in the future. So just a bit of IPA and a paper towel, clean it up nicely. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's matching the rest of the case much better now. You know, it's got that mirror finish just like the sides of the case. I don't think I'm going to bother doing the bracelet just because the polishing wheel that I was using was not the right not the right one for the job, and it was starting to scuff it. But I think this is ready to put back together. So there it is. Pretty safe to say this is going to be it in its final form now, and I think it's. Yeah, it's looking pretty great. Like, it's definitely given off those Grand Seiko vibes. Those beautiful Dauphine hands. I, oh, that Sari 57 dial. It's, it's a gorgeous dial, it really is. Oh, look at that. I love the way all the polished surfaces just play with the light. Especially now that that bezel's polished. In fact, let's get a look at it next to the Sari 57. Yeah, I think that's much better. Now that that bezel's polished, it's looking a lot more Sari 57-esque. Look at that. I'm just gutted that the uh, the day date wheel that I've got is not, doesn't have the red Sunday because that really does pop on the Sari 57, doesn't it? Anyway, let's do a quick recap of what I did to it. I swapped the Heimdalla case back for a nice display case back here. I got this on AliExpress for about 12 quid. I'll just put it up on the screen. Then I swapped out the clasp for an identical 20 millimeter clasp without any branding on it. And then there it is on wrist. And we swapped out the bezel, dial, hands, and day-date disc. Completely transforming it. I mean, here it is. Here's what it looked like in the beginning. Which I mean, it's a decent-looking watch. I mean, it's SKX, right? But with a shark on it. And you could just get an aftermarket SKX007 dial like this one. Put it on here to get rid of the Heimdaller branding. And if you wanted a Jubilee bracelet, they come with Jubilee bracelets as well for a bit of extra money. And then apart from the bezel attachment mechanism, you've got a modded SKX for really good value. Now this, this came in about 260 quid, which is 10 quid more than I paid for my Sari 57 used. But this is a different form factor with a larger bezel. It's got the Loom date disc on there, which does look pretty cool. You know, kind of reminds me of those Casios when you press the button on the watch and the screen lights up because it's, you know, just inside the frame of the day date window there. And I think for the money, it's a really good watch to mod if you're just getting into modding and you don't want to fork out for the actual or Seiko parts. The only things to keep in mind, what I've learned while modding this, is the bracelets are not interchangeable and they are not swappable with strap code bracelets. They are different. Spring bars on the strap codes are also thicker than these ones. So if you wanted to put a strap code on this watch, you can't because the case for the SKX is actually sloped, whereas this one is rounded, and you can't put this bracelet on an SKX because the holes for the spring bars don't quite line up. Fortunately, like I said, you can get these with Jubilee bracelets, so you've got options for the Oyster or the Jubilee bracelet. Also, crowns are not interchangeable, they are different. And with this particular watch, 
I did have to take the crown off the stem and use epoxy to glue it on because it did come unscrewed on me while I was taking the watch apart several times. I can't speak for the compatibility of the chapter rings or crystals because I didn't remove the crystal while doing this. And if you are happy with the bezel mechanism, you can just change the bezel insert and then swap your dial and hands and still have a decent modding process with this watch. You, the value for money is where you're going to go for this instead of modding an actual SKX. And if you get the right parts for it, it is definitely worth it. I mean, the results here speak for themselves. This was a pleasure to mod. I'm going to wear this watch frequently. And I hope you enjoyed coming along for the process. In the future, I may try to edit these videos down to a more narrated, quick overview of what I did rather than the full build log. But... I didn't really have anything planned out for this video initially. I just filmed every process and tried to cram it in. And so for this one, I'm going to leave it as a build log. But I thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.